Uh, and uh, Robin Spencer is with our procurement services division that is handling the uh, solicitation for our department. So, Robin, I'll hand it over to you. Okay. All right. So everybody should have um, received the initial notification of this event. Um, it's been posted in our GEP system. If you're not a registered supplier, I would encourage you to go out there and get registered well in advance of the deadline so that if you run into any problems, um, we can assist you in getting registered. Your bids will have to be submitted um, online uh, through the GEP system. So a few housekeeping notes. One is in the RFP, please pay attention to the minimum requirements. One of them is an, the need for an affidavit to be attached to your proposal and submitted when you submit your bid. That affidavit must be signed and notarized or it's considered invalid and it would make you non-responsive. The affidavit, there's a C and there's an E. The C the is if, oh, my watch is talking to me. Um, the C is if um, you are subcontracting any portionment, you would turn in that. Um, the E is if you're doing all the work yourself. So when you show up on the job site, you've not hired somebody else to do something else within that work. Um, you don't have to submit both. It's one or the other. Often people will go out and pay to have two things notarized and it's one or the other and it has to be submitted. Um, the question and answer period is open on the event right now. It will close on March 1st and shortly thereafter, you will see all the questions answered in the event um, the, on that and as well as an addendum will be posted with any information that comes up through this meeting and with the questions and answers that um, arise during the Q&A period. So look for that. Um, if you registered after the event opened, you will not automatically be notified of the change. So you're gonna have to watch the event on key days. Um, so after the Q&A, go back and look to make sure that you can see the question and answers. Pay attention if there's any addendums that get posted right before it closes. You're welcome to change your bid based off of anything that might occur during that time. And that's okay, so long as you please hit submit again. If you don't hit submit, it stays in draft and I can't even see it. So um, make sure you've hit submit. You can check that online. It will tell you under the my responses that uh, um, your bid has been submitted um, and it's in, you know, it's been completed. Um, the whole event ends at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on March 12th. Um, and one else, oh, when you're entering your bids, there are three sections um, that were outlined in the RFP. You might know them off the top of your head. I'd have to go look for them, Troy, if you know them. It is the, uh, it's the three specialized areas, the asbestos testing and inspection, the asbestos abatement and clearance, mm -hmm. and the demolition of buildings. Very last good. year, during the last period, we required an RFP separate to all three specializations. And this year we have merged all three into one RFP. But if you want to be considered for all three, you have to set, separate your qualifications in all three areas and submit your RFP pricing for all three areas. In so be sure it's very clear to me and Robin that you which which uh, specializations you want to be considered for, uh, because we're only going to qualify you for the ones that we have documentation for. 
So the way to easily help you to um, manage um, when you go in, the, you will see three lines that you can bid on. Sorry. You will see three lines that you can bid on and um, for each of these sections. If you want to bid on it, put a one as your answer. And then you're gonna just submit your pricing sheet as laid out in the RFP in your proposal. You're not gonna actually submit pricing on the line. You're just gonna put a one. And if you don't want to bid on that section, check the box that says um, no bid and give the reason, which I think the one that we have listed out there is um, do not wish to bid or don't provide this service. Um, either one of those are acceptable, but that will that will lay out in the event whether or not um, you want to bid on that section. I think we can talk about, it's going to be a best value contract. So um, you will see inside the event, the matrix scoring, and that will be scored by a team. Each, each bidder will be scored on each section by a team here at the city of Greensboro and points given based off of that matrix um, spreadsheet inside the event. I think that's the details on the RFP. Do you want to add things, Troy, about what you're looking for or and to answer any questions to whatever you have to say in that regard. I think that's essentially it. The just pay attention to the time frames, like in each of the specializations, like the asbestos testing, where it has like a 10 day, 10 calendar day turnaround, uh, the abatement and clearance 15 and demolition of buildings at 30 days. Um, you also, uh, the rush, there's a rush job fee. Uh, that was being asked under the testing because I think some of those situations uh, as best as testing can be turned around faster. Uh, and if so, then um, what is that rush job fee for you? We do have a fee schedule that is currently being used, but the reason that I'm asking for the uh, fees to be looked at again for the areas that you want to apply in is because I want to see what um, uh, what inflation has occurred um you know since the pandemic because this last the last process happened prior to the pandemic uh and now here we are uh so i want to see what those um uh what those pricing looks like and then i'll establish a uh, uh a fee schedule in all three areas uh and then if you're if we're able to qualify you based on the submitted information then when we, whenever we extend uh an award or a contract to you uh, we will ask for you to sign the fee schedule for those areas. Um, and if it's something that you can't agree upon, then we would have to accept your withdrawal. Are there any There's, questions that anybody yeah, has? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> Are there any questions? That's been a good RFP. Nobody's got no questions. If you can't, if you can't hear me, just raise your hand or something. Um, because like I said, one of the things that, you know, when we had wrote and put this together is we didn't want people to have to do the entire process three times with three separate RFPs. So we did put them all to put them all together. So, uh, you know, if, uh, if you can in your packets, the, the easiest way that you could do, if you could group your qualifications for, testing because you know when you're doing the testing and you're doing the abate asbestos abatement you have to provide your uh, uh asbestos supervisor licenses your worker licenses and and all the certifications you have so if if it's just a whole bunch of paperwork and we got to do a bunch of grouping then it's going to delay and one of the things that you don't want to do is after the procurement services division's deadline passes we cannot fix your packet if your packet is incomplete 
whatsoever. If you're missing a form, if you're missing an affidavit, if you submit something and it is not notarized, you are invalid and you will not be considered. Uh, your packet will all about, automatically be ineligible. Um, so any questions that you have prior to that final date, final date, I'm here and Robin's here to help you. Um, so uh, I'll put my contact information in the in the chat. I believe it may be associated with the RFP, but just understand Robin Spencer is the key person in the RFP. Uh, so your required contact is with Robin. Uh, anytime if you reach out to me, then I will reply and copy Robin so that she stays in the know. Um, but we do keep the process very transparent. We do keep it very uh, with um, open communications, but we do, you know, if you have questions or you're not sure if your packet is um, uh, is good, contact Robin. Robin will cover any questions with you and cover it. If it is a brand new question that you ask and we've not heard before, that's what she's referring to about amendments. She will make an amendment to the RFP so that everybody else knows the answer to that particular question that she helped somebody with. So last call for any questions. All right, I'm seeing none. Uh, let's see, I've got one the, answer. Um, I do have one question on the demolition. I can't, I can't remember, but the house, the demolition part is by square footage, correct? It's separated from like a wood side home and then a brick home. It is. Uh, let me pull up something here. I made a, a document. I'll share my screen so everybody can see what the current stuff is. Does everybody see my screen? All right. I can. So what you, uh, let's see, let me make it one page big so you can see. All right, so under current, like say for example, asbestos testing and inspection, you can see that there is a base fee and what is being asked is what is the base fee for it that includes at least 10 material tests. And then if I assign you two, to four structures at the exact same time, then that fee would be, would be what? This is the current. So say, for example, if I'm going to assign you two properties to test right now, then your notice to proceed fee will show 300 for this property, 300 for that property, and so on and so forth if I assign this many at a single time. Um, then you have material fee. What is your fee? If you have to do more than 10 tests, what is the fee per test after the base fee? Uh, then we have a rust job. So if I need a quick turnaround on asbestos testing, this is what it, what is that amount going to be? Um, for asbestos abatement, you have it's separated into non-friable asbestos material, friable asbestos material, and your final visual inspection. Obviously, everyone has to have a final visual. So what is that price uh, for it? I want to check these two numbers here. Another number that you can also provide, and I think I may have put it in the RFP, is when uh, glazing, like when a window or when glazing or something has to be removed, sometimes it's like 40 bucks a window or, or something that has to be removed. I think I put an extra line or extra ask in the actual RFP looking for that pricing. Uh, to answer your question here, Michael, is the demolition of the actual building uh, it is based on these categories. So you basically you have a wood frame, vinyl structure that's one story, two story, then a brick siding, one story, two story, and then a mason structure of one story. Um, you have tandem load of clean fill dirt. Generally, it's it's on this one is for basements. I don't think I put that on the RFP uh, because what is what it's looking for is six dollars per cubic foot. Um, that you'll be providing because that's generally how you have to purchase it. Um, so um, it's not in the per square foot of the area that you have to do. That's why it's noted here on the fee schedule of a cubic foot. So it's generally probably 28 cubic feet, you know, for a demo, for a demolished structure. Concrete slabs, four inches thick, whatever the price is. I just, like I said, I'm double checking these prices. 
Um, in our situations, we may have if there's a driveway that is busted up or damaged, then I'm going to I'm going to uh, measure it out and ask for it to be removed. But we're all, always going to remove up to the first cut uh, before reaching the public right of way. Uh, so I'm going to leave the um, the driveway going in from the street, and we're going to go all the way from the street back to the first cut. And that, and we're going to take everything out from there deep into the property. We'll do the same thing for sidewalks. You know, wherever, uh, if it goes to steps, if it goes to the sidewalk, we're going to go back in um, until the first crease in that concrete. And then that's where I'm going to measure um, because we always want to keep the access to the public sidewalk, the public street, all available for a new housing that can be built into that property uh, anywhere in the future. This one here, I've added this section here in as reference. I'm not certain if I've listed this for your pricing because I'm pulling this pricing from the nuisance fee schedule we already have in place. So essentially a six inch to 12 inch diameter tree, you're not looking at the circumference of the tree. If you cut the tree off, what is the, what is the measuring distance from this side to the other side? That is your diameter of the tree. Uh, so as big as the tree is, then it goes up in the cost. If there's any additional um, uh, problems regarding the situation, then you know I'll factor those in. But I may have to use a different fee schedule to factor them in, or I may have to simply use a utilize a nuisance contractor um, to handle those aspects of the job prior to your demolition. Does that answer your question? You're, You're muted, muted, Michael. The, the the pricing you have here that's displayed is that last year's pricing or is that pricing that y'all previously used or what? It's current pricing because the con the contracts that we're um, doing RFP for is active until April fourteenth. So these contractors are currently using this pricing. Um, I was going to maintain this pricing, but like I said, the difference in society from then until now is a pandemic and inflation. So I want to check these prices with the RFP to see how far off and what adjustments I can make that would be reasonable uh, for us being good stewards of the city. Okay. So are you awarding this to one con contractor or multiple contractors? Uh, I think I have listed up to, yeah, it'd be multiple. Yeah. Yeah, currently I have like five uh, I think five in each special specialized areas. All right. Are there any other questions? I know I saw uh, a gentleman just uh, joined. So in the chat, there's my number, email. And you have Robin's information also that is in, uh, included in the RFP. I'm going to put it in the chat too. And I see Al Alec. Uh, you just joined us. Um, what vendor are you representing? So I can make it for my note. Can you hear us? Alec, Alex. Top of the chat. Alec, can you hear us at all? He's looking at us. Yep. I'll look on his registration and see if he has an email, and I'll try to reach out to him. 
Oh, connecting to auto, I see he's popping up there. So he's probably trying to get in with this voice. Uh, have a Pete as well, and uh, gentlemen, glad, thank for thank you everybody for uh, for hanging out. But I don't want to dismiss you because if, if any of these other gentlemen ask a question, you might want to know their answer. All right, Pete, can you hear me? Uh, you're muted. Yeah, I got you. All right, hello, Pete. Which vendor are you representing? We're uh, a bait master. And Alec, can you hear me now? Um, one of the things that I can do, I, I believe that I might be able to post a link to this Zoom call on an addendum to the event so they can pick up any information that was that they missed coming in a little bit late and not being able to hear right the, does that work for you that does okay so pete uh not to really mention uh go through everything because you'll be able to read um uh listen to the recording uh afterwards Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So Alec is also a bait master with Pete. Okay. Um, is what's what is different this year, um, Pete, is that all three specializations is, is combined into one RFP. Um, and whenever you submit the RFP, uh, it needs to be clear which specializations you're applying for. Like currently a bait master is in all three categories. Uh, so just the submission of the RFP will not automatically place you in all three categories. You will have to submit your qualifications for all three um, with them being separated in the in the process uh, with any materials or certifications, licenses that you have to provide for each. Um, you have to do the um, uh, the RFP part of it as well. Submit the pricing for all three categories as well. And I think uh, Robin shared earlier that in that particular event, beside that event code, you will place a one that you want to be qualified and considered for that specialization. Um, and if you do not, you will not be considered uh, for that specialization. In your packet, if you have any questions whatsoever um, or your affidavits, uh, you want to be sure that they are complete um, because if an affidavit is received and it is uh, is not complete, you risk not being able to be considered for this cycle. Um, and when I say that, I, I don't say that to me to show to be lenient or anything, but that will be beyond mine and Robin's control. Um, mm -hmm. sure. Because in order to be a fair process, everybody has the same information, exposed to the same questions and the same packets. Uh, so if everybody submits uh, notarized affidavits and you do not, obviously your application is automatically denied. Okay. All right, Stacy, I see that you just joined. Which uh, vendor are you representing? Hi, good morning. Apologies, I got held up on something else. Uh, Arc Environmental is the name of our firm. Okay. We pretty much covered a lot of the information already. Do you, what yep. questions would you have? No worries. Um, I don't have any questions for you at this time. Okay. And Robin said she is going to make this recording available. Um, so you'll, you'd be able to get in and actually uh, see what uh, was shared with the other contractors that are on the call. Perfect. Thank you. I don't see anybody else coming into the room. Um, any other questions? Last call for any questions. All right. Seeing none, you have our information. Um, 
you know, thank you for your interest in this process. We do have a lot of demolitions that we're still working through with the city. Uh, we have demolished 28 structures in the last year and a half, and I've got 91 on the list that I've been that I'm still working through. So um, we hope to get another half a million from city council uh, and to continue through this process. All right. Thank I you. guess that's it, Robin, if you want to close us out. Yeah, thanks, everybody. And again, reach out to me if you have any issues with the uh, registration or with how to bid. And if you have any questions about the bid, please post them on the event before March 1st. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.